In this video, I would like to take you on a journey on how to calculate the last 12 months in Power BI. I'm naming a journey because I'm going to show you five different ways. And the goal is simply to show you that there's different ways to do it. So let's get to it. So calculating the last 12 months can be beneficial in your analysis if you want to see trends and perhaps your company has a certain seasonality, whereas most of the sales are done at the end of the year. By showing the last 12 months, you actually see if there is a growth pattern over the time. And you take away the seasonality because the high performing sales end of the year are always going to be part of the 12 months. So I'm going to show you five ways to do this. In the graph we're looking on my screen right now, it's a very simple matrix with years and months. And at the moment, there's a simple sales metric that shows the sales for each of the months. The first way that I want to show you is we're going to write a measure from scratch, a new measure. So our first calculation is the last 12 months, version one. And version one, you would write equals calculate. You always base your measure on sales. And calculate is required because we're going to change the filter context so that when you show a single month like January it's going to show you the 12 months from January till February the previous year. So what you can do is the first version is write dates and period. And its first argument requires you to put in the dates from your calendar. So you write your date key. Then there is the starting date. And what you can do here, your starting date doesn't always have to start like at the beginning of the year. You could also say my starting date is the maximum of the year. So the max date value that I find in the current filter context. And then what I want to show is everything from that max date until 12 months earlier. So you could write minus 12. And as a last argument, you could write months. You close your brackets and your parentheses. And you finish your first calculation. Now we can try it last 12 months if you want. And let me just format that one. So we go to formatting, I'd like to see a whole number. And otherwise, it looks good. Let me just place this one in the sales table. So we have a look there. I close the customer table. Okay. So when you have a close look, you'll find that month 12 in 2010 is the first month with sales. So it is the same number. Then in January 2011, we have the 469,000 plus 43,000, and you get to 513,000. So that seems to add up correctly. And as you can see, the numbers remain almost the same here, because some of the new sales are added, but the older sales in 12 months, they're not taken into the calculation anymore. Let's go to the version number two. So we can write a new measure, the last 12 months V2, equals. So we're going to write a calculate of the sales. And this time, we're going to write something else, we're going to write dates between. And the dates between function needs you to provide the dates from the date table. And it needs a start date. So what I could do is write start date, because we don't have it yet, and an end date. So in theory, if we had a starting date and an ending date, this formula would now work. But we don't have those yet. So we're going to work with some variables. And to write the end date, we could write end date is the max of the regular date, which find the latest date in the current filter context. Then start date, we could do something else, there is a function called e date. And e date picks a date, and then you can actually move it back or forwards a certain amount of months. So you could write the end date here, referencing the earlier variable, and write minus 12 months. And then of course, the result also needs to be a variable, start date and end date, and we return the result. So that's version number two. In version number two, we can put it in the matrix. And uh, Let's give it a good formatting of a whole number. And you'll find that, let's see, 
I think there is one mistake in here still. Start date and end date. So right now it's showing us the numbers in between these two dates. But of course, if we take it 12 months back, we have a day in there that is not supposed to be taken. So we have to write plus one. So if you take your uh, max date minus 12 months plus one day, you'll find that the results are identical. So that's version number two. Version number three. For version number three, you will have to look at the data model. And I will show that in the date table, I added an index year, uh, an index for the year month number. What is the index for the year month? The index number column here, the, the column with the index number, it shows an increment for each of the month that goes up. So if I scroll down, for every switch of the month in the data model, it adds a number. So we go from January to February, and it goes from 37 to 38. And it just goes on. So the benefit of this is, even if you switch to a new year, the counter of this index number, it continues. That's good to know. We're going to leverage this in our next formula. So we're going to make a new measure. And in this case, we're going to make a V3. And we're going to take this away. And we're going to take this part away as well. Okay, so let's just imagine that we're starting with the calculate of the total sales. What you can do is you can write a, a filter formula first, where you take all the filters off of the date table. So that any filters in your filter context are taken off of the date table. Then the next step would be that we're going to look at the index number in our date table. So we have this index number, and it has to be smaller or equal than the max index. And it also, the index year month, has to be greater than the min index. We close it. So we don't have these values again. So this is just how I start writing it. Then we're going to make a variable for the max index which is the max of the index column in the date year in the date uh, the, the max of the index year month column in the date table and we can have a min index which is the max index minus 12 and because i'm saying minus 12 here just for my own reference that it's a 12 month uh, change i put bigger than in my uh, in my formula so these now work. The only thing that's left is to return the result. And if we put this result here in the matrix, we can format it as a whole number. And again, you find that these numbers are equal. So that's version number three. Okay, time for version number four. Version number four is very similar to version number three. However, instead of using an index column, which definitely not all the models have, we're going to use a date. So instead of using this date here, uh, instead of the index, we, we replace it by the date. And we're going to call this a version 4. We have a max date and a min date. So the max date is going to be the maximum of the date column. Now the min date we're going to write here e dates of the max date and then minus 12 months. So again, if we take the maximum date minus 12 months, we're going to have 366 days. So to make sure we have the right time period, <laughs> In our calculate function, we look at the dates that are smaller or equal to the max date and bigger than the min date. And with it, we get our result. We add it to the table. We format this again as a whole number and make the matrix a bit bigger. So here we go. So that's version number four. And as you can tell, the results are equal. Okay, time for the finale. We're going to go for version 5. And version 5, again, is very similar to version 4, but it uses some different functions. And if we start by pasting number 4, we can change it to version 5. Then instead of using the max date, 
we could also use last date and when using a last date it always returns a uh, it, it allows you to leverage different functions so instead of saying the e date I could say I want to have something from the same period last year and because the period in the max date here uh, is a single day then the same period last year will also be a single day and then this can remain the same and you can have your function here as well now we press enter we can add this to the matrix and well our measure still needs to be formatted okay now let's have a quick look at our uh, five versions so our five version seems to have the same totals and the numbers are identical so this 45 here is 45 there and in that way you reach the same result using different functions Okay, that was the content for this video today. As you can tell, there are so many ways to calculate the last 12 months, and I'm sure I've missed a few. So if I missed any that you'd like to use, please let me know in the comments. The goal in itself is not to always write these five different ones, but it's simply to know that these are ways in which you could reach the goal that you need. I will launch more videos later on DAX, so if you don't wanna miss any of this, make sure you subscribe, and if this added any value, Please let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.